What's going on everybody? It's Pac-Man Jones with Savannah Seaport News. I have a give an update yet again. I made a video about this uh, a few vid videos back about the trial of Kevin Palmer. Actually, the murder that took place of William Whitsett that took place in December of 2014 where his body was found in Georgetown, like in the construction site area. And Kevin Palmer, he actually has been found guilty, guilty of charges of felony murder, aggravated assault, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, concealing the death of another, possession of marijuana with intent to distribute, possession of marijuana and possession of a controlled substance. Um, he's been sentenced this month to 25, well, he's been sentenced to life in prison plus 25 years and the possibility of parole for the shooting death of William Whitsett where he was shot five times by a 22 caliber handgun and I did a little bit more research about life sentences because I always been a little bit confused about life sentences and how that works and you have to serve at least 30 years before you're eligible for parole in this case in particular this guy has parole so oh well, he's, he's eligible for parole but that won't happen until 30 years from now so picture this 2047 that's when he'll be possibly on parole but that's just that's just the initial date of where he could be eligible for that I mean that uh, that doesn't mean that he will get it in 2047 that just means that it's possible so he'll still have to serve the other 25 uh, years whether it's on parole or on papers or in however how that works out now more about this case, his then girlfriend Genevieve Meeks testified against him in this ongoing case because Genevieve Meeks and another person, Bradley Bates, was actually charged with the murder as well, but there wasn't enough evidence, so they dismissed the, the murder on both of them, but they still had charges of weed possession for Meeks. Now Meeks she was granted the first offenders act during the sentencing before the chatham county superior judge judge louisa abbott now louisa abbott she noticed that meeks testified truthfully during palmer's trial and also a stipulation of her testifying since she won't have a uh, a felony charge against her she would have to perform 120 hours of community service avoid drugs or alcohol and have no contact with the victim's family and also how they initially even caught Meeks uh, the girlfriend of Kevin Palmer Kevin Palmer and Meeks were living in the same apartment where they found uh, like large bags of weed and the murder weapon because what happened is Kevin Palmer shot and killed William Whitsett and then dumped his body and then took his drugs and then was trying to sell it underneath his name you know what I'm saying so when Kevin Palmer did that he was really trying to like throw off people like because William Whitsett I guess was in the circle of Genevieve Meeks I guess they kind of all knew each other and you know he she knew that they would communicate all the time and I guess they would see each other all the time so whenever she would ask anything about the the deceased victim Whitsett uh, Kevin Palmer he would kind of make things up about like where Whitsett is he would make up things like he was in a, a cocaine meeting 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 people about co cocaine prices and and uh, other lies like that and the judge believed her testimony that she was telling the truth and she got five years probation now in some other news I actually made a video about this in my last video about the dirty cops in Savannah I labeled it seaport conspiracies and when the video first started I talked about this homicide detective or investigator by the name of Kevin Grogan now I made videos about this guy uh, once before when I did the video about Rashad Spann and his involvement with that case and how he refused to testify in that now, Kevin Grogan on Monday was convicted of DUI but acquitted on charges of 
of him where he was attempted well not even attempted but where he tried to cover up his involvement with a uh, the DUI that happened in 2014 where he crashed behind this lady this lady by the name of Yolanda Dreyer uh, that testified last week that she was driving northbound on Truman Parkway on July the 17th 2014 when Grogan's car driven at a high speed struck her from from behind driving her off the roadway she suffered a concussion and other injuries Grogan who was driving his unmarked police car struck his head on the windshield shattering the glass uh, he got his alcohol like blood level you know when you do the alcohol test his alcohol test was at 0.08 alcohol level so I mean he he's guilty of being involved with the DUI but he was acquitted with his involvement with the cover-up trying to tamper with police evidence involving with his case now he will remain free on bond while pending the sentencing from the judge now more about this he was driving his personal car while he was drinking I believe it was an unmarked police vehicle that took place in that crash and more about this case in particular even Kevin Grogan he even told the jurors that he went out with some friends that night and went to two bars a video played for the jury showing Grogan to have four drinks and a beer at the second bar and then he returned returned home before leaving later to gas up his car now the apartment has a strict policy you know it's a it's a one strike rule you know if you are caught driving in a personal vehicle while drinking alcohol you're automatically terminated without any second chances at all so I mean he pretty much knew that he would have to resign you know he don't he don't want to get terminated because in the police world getting terminated I mean that still shows up if you want to go to another police department let's say in another city or let's say if you want to go to I don't know Albany Georgia if you want to be a police officer there you know getting terminated they will then look up and see oh why was you terminated oh because of this reason that reason so it would be better for police officers to resign and I, I kind of understand that but you know like I said in my seaport conspiracies you know there's dirty cops even though there were people I guess that were kind of behind his side Kevin Grogan's side saying that he was a good homicide detective but you know it was just one of these situations where yeah he was a I guess a awesome homicide investigator but he still has his own dirt you know so people like this can't be accepted into the Savannah Savannah Chatham government workforce I mean we don't really need people like this that's it's bad enough that I see videos every time I, I turn on my TV about click of the ticket let alone I don't want to hear about a police officer being involved with the DUI and trying to cover up his own faults in the case but like I said in my seaport conspiracies video there's a long list of dirty police officers I mean that video could have been 25 minutes long I could have kept going about more dirty police officers but I decided not to you know and this believe it or not it's a secret brotherhood within the Savannah Chatham Metro Police Department a brotherhood that protects their own police officers you know protect and serve protect your own and serve warrants that's all they do you know I don't know if they really care about the the public safety of the of the public of course but I mean all the one all the cops that I talked about were just protecting their own self protect their protecting their own ass you know so I'll just leave it at that you can make your own own assumptions about that but that's all for right now. It's Pac-Man Jones with Savannah Seaport News, and I'm out.